Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Marini Furniture. If you viewed last month's episode, we built a modern live edge desk for my son. This month we explore some foreign territory with the addition of some leather upholstery as we complement the desk with a modern office chair. If you enjoy the madness, please like, subscribe, and if you're really feeling lippy, feel free to leave a comment. Last month was quite an endeavor with the desk. It was probably the largest project I've undertaken in a long time. The modern design was quite refreshing. However, in a moment of naivety, I planned on making a chair to accompany the desk, but the lack of time remaining before the episode debut made that feat impossible. So here we are this month making a modern chair for the modern desk. I did not want this to be like any other woodworker's chair. I wanted to expose myself to some additional discomfort upholstery. Fortunately, I come from a line of seamstresses or perhaps tailors is more appropriate. Point being, these women can sew some thread. And not to mention my dad was able to recall a lot of his observations from watching his mother on those old Singer machines. Anyways, naturally, I am an autodidact or self-taught. I've always struggled in the classroom, mostly due to a lack of patience, but in this case, I was very grateful for the orientation I received from my parents, as this saved a lot of precious time lost to trial and error. So for the first time, I was able to marry wood and leather into my designs in pursuit of building finer furniture. So I do hope you enjoy the ride. Real quick, so some much needed supplies arrived, including some square carbide inserts for the router sled, the long awaited metal detector that came with this cool little holster, this beautiful base for the office chair, and of course our sewing machine to stitch the leather as designed. I will begin listing all products in the commentary for reference if needed. As I'm nestling into my niche and finding my humble place on YouTube, as I've mentioned in my last couple episodes, I believe I'm developing what many would refer to as a style or signature. Mulberry contrasted with walnut and highlighted with gold or brass. This base was exactly what I was looking for, so I had to take the plunge and decided to make the purchase. The desk and chair were custom designed with the dimensions or specifications of my son through childhood and adolescence. So it is not a full-size desk and neither is the chair, which was a perfect place for me to explore these concepts. The assembly of the base was quite straightforward. The assembly came with all of the typical features of a desk chair, including the reclining and height adjustment features. I was very pleased with the purchase. During the design phase of this piece, I felt like I was getting a little too ambitious with my signature theme as I felt like the array of colors was going to be a bit too much. I had a gold base with black wheels, a walnut chair with some mulberry mixed in, and brown leather upholstery in a slightly different shade than the walnut. I felt like three colors in general is acceptable, but five was going to be too chaotic for an attempt to remain modern, but also simple. I had to shake some stubbornness and loosen up a bit with the design. I had to cut mulberry out this round to reel in the design concept to no more than four colors as there was not much I could do to change the wheels at this point. So we begin the woodworking phase of this journey with the remaining walnut from the desk build last month. This way the majority of the chair solidly matches its greater predecessor. As you can observe, I decided to cross the grains in the design to thicken the chair and also create additional stability to prioritize the integrity of the chair. While we wait for some glue to dry, I figured take a break with the kid and the parents to enjoy some of El Paso's rare but perfect transitional weather between the frigid winters and blazing hot summers. As you can see, the boy is still small, so I did not want to build something too big for him, but at the rate he's growing, I did not want to build something that he would outgrow quickly. Target attrition duration was one decade. Now I know as woodworkers, there are a few smells better than fresh sawdust, but I would gladly argue those would be fresh salsa and steak. 
Typically with office chairs, at least from what I've observed, the backrest tends to be a bit longer, which is exactly what we are working towards here. The debate in my head was what exact dimensions we wanted to make this to fit a child through adolescent hood. I needed a headrest incorporated into the final product, but I knew in order to incorporate this, we would have to dimension the headrest as an adolescent because he would obviously immediately outgrow it as he transitions to the size of an adolescent. So after some careful measurements based on ratio, we execute. We free up some clamps from the seat assembly and clamp the boards to complete part one of the backrest assembly. You probably saw me woodworking in my running shoes there in a couple clips. I've noticed my footwear usually lasts me about six months before I start getting little aches and pains, which may have been from long distance running up into my 20s. So I finally had to make the trip to get some new boots and oh my goodness, it's like night and day. Protect those knees. You might be wondering why on earth I'm CNCing what seems to be a relatively straightforward design. Well, with the limitations of my shop, I was most confident CNCing the perimeter of the seat and backrest. I was afraid of not getting the angles right, a lack of symmetry, and simply needing to start over. So I committed to the CNC design, creating the toolpath in Aspire, saving an opening in UGS platform to execute. Speaking of making mistakes, I was fortunate enough to catch myself mixing up the X and Y axis of the layout and toolpath and remedied with a quick dimension swap for the project and toolpath. This machine is without a doubt a technical skill, but the capabilities of the machine can create some extremely accurate dimensioning, which in this case was exactly what I was using it for. Now, as we transition to the second part of the backrest assembly, I have a couple priorities other than taking videos from awesome angles with some sweet slow-mo shots. These include one, ensuring we have flush surface to surface contact to create a strong bond. Two, perpendicular grains between surfaces to create some additional strength. Although the user might change over the years, I want this thing to last 100 years. So I am most concerned about the quality, durability, and longevity of this piece, and this goes for any and all of my future work in general. I simply want to continue to raise the bar as high as it can go. We lather up each side with a nice thick layer of glue without concern for excess, as the perimeter will also be cnc love at first sight oh man this was a great experience that i'm really happy was documented as i know leather is inevitably going to become a central theme of my woodwork and furniture taking authentic leather out of the package was a truly special experience it was as if the halo music was playing in the background the quality look and feel was exactly how i imagined it This project was definitely beyond my comfort zone, but I knew I had to keep pushing my limits. Of all things, I was actually stressing about the seat and the backrest quite a bit. I guess I tend to stress the most until I start to see the project come into a resemblance of the original design. But as I continued to explore beyond any uncertainty, progress followed closely. Following much of the same technique for the seat, we begin to dimension the backrest with the CNC toolpath. If you've watched any of my episodes before, you will have heard me explain the importance of dry running your CNC simply because of an XY axis mix up, a mismeasurement, or a toolpath miscalculation. So I observed the machine very closely during the execution because I did not have the time or remaining walnut to endure an additional iteration.
All right, let's get out of the dang garage. I love the garage, but I know my mind. I have to zoom out every now and again, see the world, talk to strangers, observe passerbys. If I'm zoomed in too long, I feel like I lose sight of my overall vision and the passion is malnourished. Now, I have a theory about people in traveling. I think people like absorbing the world around them as I think it inspires them as they go. It's as if it influences alternate pathways in the brain. I like to think this rewiring and extra exposure enables people to see things differently, which can manifest as something exciting or fresh or original. In my case, I want to utilize the luxury of my time and resources to create something new. Like any explorer at heart, I'm just a simple man searching for answers. So one of the cool things about CNC is you can set the X and Y toolpath, but you can also program in your Z toolpath. In this case, I only programmed the Z axis to about an inch in depth for the seat and backrest. So we had some excess we had to clean up. I could have programmed it to go a little bit deeper, but you have to ensure you program in tabs. And sometimes if there are not enough tabs, the project can shift a little bit and the router will begin to jump. So I did not take the risk and decided to use the router table instead. My main priority with this desk chair build is safety and security. However, with this thing moving relatively on schedule, I decided to shift a little attention to comfort by adding an angle for the backrest. After observing a store-bought office chair we had in our house, it appeared that there was a roughly a 10 degree angle from the seat to the backrest. So I decided the best way to do this was to add the angle to the inferior edge of the backrest with my table saw. Once this was accomplished, I wanted to make sure I had some screws in place and ones deep enough to penetrate the backrest from the bottom of the seat, supplemented with some glue as well. Ultimately, I wanted to ensure the backrest was not going to peel off the seat with some lateral stress. The armrests will later play a role in shoring up this concern as well. Now we really begin to push into some foreign territory with the assembly of our seat cushion. There are some great videos of furniture makers on YouTube where I was able to gain some basic knowledge on the basics of upholstery. So I figured we'd give it a go. Now the board I dimensioned was a little bit thicker than what I would have liked to have used, but I was a little afraid of going too thin and the tension of the leather influencing a tension on the board that might cause it to warp. So in my novice state of upholstery, we stuck to the thicker board. The other office chair we have in our house seemed like it lost its cushion firmness within a couple of years. And I was afraid of this happening with this chair. Even though my son is not necessarily all that heavy, I doubled up on the seat cushion regardless. This kind of offset the proportions of the chair come the conclusion of the project, but it is something I will have to explore a bit more in the future. I think I will explore some cushion technology ideas I have in mind come June when I attempt another chair for my next desk. So stay tuned. The design I was going for with this chair was pseudo aviation. I wanted the leather to be stitched perpendicular to the armrests. Fortunately, with the assistance of my parents, I was able to get the machine up and running. I'd purchased the Singer 4411 heavy duty sewing machine as the reviews online stated that it was durable enough to handle leather. As I experimented a bit with this machine, I was trying to figure out the sweet spot with the needle sizes. I found with leather, the 18s were too thick and the thread kept getting caught. If there is a solution to that size of needle, I have yet to figure it out. The 14s worked, but ultimately ended up being too frail. And in fact, I snapped the tip off one of them. The 16s ended up working the best, the gauge being not too frail and not too thick. I used nylon thread as I read this was strong enough for leather as well. Overall, it was a relatively smooth experience. With the backrest, I wasn't as concerned about the longevity of the foam as I knew it would not endure as much weight as the seat. So I only went one cushion deep on this element. Again, this kind of messed up my vision of proportionality, but lesson learned. I do think the thickness of the backrest was more what I had in mind for the overall vision, but 
At this point, I had to make it work. One of the things I was concerned about as I explored leather was the thickness of what I was ordering. I was a little afraid what I'd order was too thick, but in all honesty, it ended up being perfect for furniture use. The thickness was perfect for the capabilities of the sewing machine and the flexibility was perfect for making nice and tight upholstery. Overall, I was very lucky with the materials and tools acquired for this episode. The headrests and armrests were designed into the chair, and as time ran short, I heavily debated on skipping this portion of the project, but I just couldn't push it out on YouTube without them, even if it delayed the scheduled debut a bit, so I got back to work and started to knock these out. An issue I came across with the armrest was I had to take into consideration the extra foam padding I added to the seat, which cost me another inch or so. In other words, I was afraid of adding the armrest too low now that my son would be sitting a little bit higher. I originally intended to implement a more modern design with the armrest, but had ultimately fallen short this round and had to settle for a simple right angle where the wrists will rest. I ran through a couple concepts for the headrest as I wanted a unique design. As the angle of the chair was themed at 10 degrees, I decided to do the same with each lateral side of the headrest. This gave it that unique and modern look I was going for. I debated a bit on the thickness of this as well, but ultimately decided to maintain uniformity as much as possible. So we glued two walnut boards together to give it that common thickness. The upholstery of the headrest was nearly identical to the method I used for the seat and backrest, but the armrests were a design I implemented rather late in the game. I decided to glue the foam padding directly to the armrest as opposed to a board, as I felt like this board was going to add too much height. There was a part of me that debated on leaving the walnut as it was, but I felt like the upholstery added to this area would make the entire project look that much more professional. As we prep for finishing, we do some sanding and fine sanding to ensure that those surfaces are nice and smooth for final inspection. I really wanted to keep as much pure tongue oil away from the leather as possible, so we finished the walnut prior to mounting of the upholstery. Pure tongue oil on walnut is something special, but pure tongue oil on leather is a mess. So once we finished the walnut, we set it in the shade to dry for a few hours on a relatively sunny day. This way I know the oil is not going to seep into the leather and cause discoloration or damage. As we approach the finish line, we upholster and mount the armrests, add some brass to the neck of the headrest, and mount the chair to the base. I could not help but appreciate the crisp, clean look before adding the upholstery as this may inspire the design of the next build. And lastly, mount the upholstery to the chair before giving her a little spin.
This was probably the coolest thing I have ever made and I am so happy that my son gets to enjoy it, hopefully for the next decade. So first and foremost, I wanted to thank my subscribers as you all encourage me to continue creating content for you all each month. If you did enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, or leave a comment. Thank you for joining me on another adventure. Until the 1st of May, have a great month, everybody. Thanks.